Hi, thank you for choosing this channel to learn how to wax paper and napkins to create a less fragile and a very transparent product. I'm Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Today I'm going to be gluing two playing cards together to utilize as a substrate for a trading card. I first took a coarse piece of sandpaper and roughed up the playing cards and now I am applying my homemade gesso recipe in the content on every card and I'm going to set those aside and allow them to dry. Once dry, I'm going to come back in with that coarse sandpaper and just knock off any little lumps that might have come from the plaster of Paris that's in the gesso. To color these, I've chosen Distress Oxide inks and I'm utilizing bundled sage and scattered straw. Just spraying them on very random, very simply to create some color to allow that um, background for the napkins. Once complete, I will let that dry and then I am going to use tacky glue and glue two of the cards together. Just using my bone folder to smear that glue and make sure it is adhered. Now to get a little more interest on the back piece, I have pulled out a black acrylic Arteza ink, a bottle cap from a soda, and a card from a piece of junk mail. And I'm using that bottle cap to create little half circles up in the corner that will show through on that back copy paper piece. And now I'm using the card to come back in with the little lines. Now this card is a little flimsy and you can see right here that it bends on me and kind of uh, makes that one line a little sloppy, but I'm not unhappy with how that look looks. I did use this on all of the cards. Some came out really, the lines came out really well, but I did move to a hotel key card and got rid of this little flimsy piece of, of junk mail. So now you can see how that looks through that back piece, or that's what I'm looking at. I have it a little out of frame, but I was just checking to make sure that it showed through. The napkins come in two and three ply is what I've seen thus far. Utilizing a piece of scotch tape to pull up that first ply, I've seen that tip on multiple channels, so I thought I would go ahead and share it here once again. It is a very easy way to determine if you have additional plies and to get your fingers underneath. I keep my fingernails trimmed down really close to the ends of my fingers, so I don't have the fingernails to help me grab underneath a ply. And I'm just cutting this into usable sizes and setting it aside. I will use it in other projects. And likewise, with the designed pieces, I am cutting it down. Remember, we're utilizing playing cards, so I don't need a lot of material. I've pulled out some parchment paper, which I am going to use to iron upon, laying the napkin down on top of that parchment paper. And I have a pillar that I've picked up at the dollar store, Dollar Tree, and I'm just utilizing a kitchen grater and grating that wax right on top of this napkin and I am trying to get complete coverage, I will pull another piece of parchment paper out. Parchment paper is non-stick. It's a cellulose-based product, which is a wood pulp product made from wood pulp that is non-stick, and it's perfect for, for this application. So I am going back with a second cut of wax because I did see some pieces on this particular napkin that I did not get covered. So I'm just sending it back in a second time. And now you can see how transparent that makes that napkin. There it is after, there it is before. So quite a difference. And we'll do that one more time. Again, just a simple little kitchen grater of some kind and a candle of any kind. 
I have not used any colored candles, but I think it would be interesting to see what happened with those. I have just used these white or ivory colored candles, and that is the limit of my experience thus far. So if you play with a colored candle, let me know in the comments how that worked out. Important fact to remember with the iron, no water in the iron, no steam in the ironing, just a hot, dry iron. This is an iron that I picked up at a discount store. I don't use it anywhere but in my workshop. Had a little piece on there that I thought was wax and I kept going back with the iron to try to melt it and it just wasn't melting and I finally realized that it was just a little piece of debris off of my table that um, just picked off very easily. So I'm just ironing once again to kind of melt that wax to make sure there isn't a little indentation where that was. And see how beautiful that napkin turned out. It's so transparent. It's, it's I think, lovely. Here are some of the other pieces that I'm using, some of the other napkins. I'm showing them to you on top of this music sheet just so you can see the transparency. I think they turned out really nice. And I always get those llamas upside down. See the little llama in there? It, my eye just <laughs> never picks it up the first time. I have to play with it. So the back of, of this card, I have created the wording that I wanted to use, which is my name, my channel address, my Instagram address, my Facebook address. Created it in PowerPoint, printed it on plain copy paper, had coffee dyed the coffee paper prior to running it through my printer. So a simple piece of coffee dyed paper printed in my inkjet printer and I am waxing and moving that wax around on top of it. It does not blur the ink. It came out just fine. And it's very transparent, as you can see. So that is why I chose to use that black ink on the back side of all of these cards. And I'm going to adhere that piece of waxed copy paper to the back with that clear tacky glue. And just move that glue around a little bit with my bone folder again. I do think that the next time I do this, instead of utilizing my bone folder, while I was very while I was very careful and didn't scratch the candle wax on the piece, I think that could be a potential issue. So I would just use a piece of cloth in your hands or um, you know something that is soft to go over that. And now I'm just now that that has dried. I'm just cutting around the outside edges. Now I flipped it over, allowed it to dry, made sure it was very set, and I'm flipping it over and I'm going to position the napkin so I get the design that I'm looking for on the front and I shall just glue this on now. Now, the next step that I did with these pieces is I secured them in binder clips to just kind of let them dry before I cut 
around the outside edge of that napkin, which is a lighter. Once I did that, I put them in a folder and ran them through that Big Shot embosser. So I had a little embossing folder with a design on it that I liked. I ran them through that embosser. I like what that does because it really puts the two cards together. It is a way to give that um, piece a real substantial feel. And I have clipped them once again just to kind of keep them until they're completely dry. They were a little, the glue was just a little wet when I ran it through my embossing folder. I don't recommend that. I would wait until it was completely dry before you run it through. But this is my finished piece. Once they were dry, I undid the binder clip, inked around the outside edges. I used the archival ink in a fern green and a oxide ink in a vintage photo to go around the outside edges of all of these cords. And that really completes the project. I'm going to put them in a little folder that gives the directions on how I did it and shoot them out for my, my trade. So I do thank you once again for joining me. This is the finished piece and I am making the folders this weekend. I also am working on a project where I am using toilet paper rolls to create a Thanksgiving centerpiece. So please subscribe to my channel. You'll be notified when I upload that. Thank you so very much.